establish, to establish audio connection with uh, Mr. Sylvester Romani Jr. So the visuals are a little uh, not too clear, but we can hear him though. So let's give it a shot. Good morning, Mr. Romani Sr. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Okay, so we're just talking about this, uh, this case, and uh, we did hear some part of what you were saying in that report. So uh, just go ahead and talk to us now about the uh, concerns you have, because, I mean, that couldn't have been, oh, just a short report, about the concerns you have on that coroner's case. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my son died 30th of November 2021. We've been in court for two years plus. But the judgment given yesterday does not represent the true uh, evidence given in court. I went to court almost every day, in fact, every day. I don't miss any day. But Nigerians can also testify that at a point, Corona stopped for almost six months. Almost six months. Before I eventually I was making some press briefing, eventually it called the case. But when you gave the judgment yesterday, my brother, I've not seen where, I remember when they were showing the video of my son in court. He made a statement that there's no sentiment, there's no emotion in law. Those were his statements. When everybody was crying in court. But to everybody's surprise, yesterday, the coroner, while delivering the judgment, cried seven times. The fifth time he went to his summer's came out with tissue, then he busted to Christ. And the whole judgment was just one-sided. You were talking about the evidence of uh, the doctors and all the rest. Okay, well, I think you lost him for, for a moment, so we're trying to get that back up. So. Well, clearly, you can see that uh, he's distraught about all of that, not exactly satisfied or happy with how that judgment has turned out. And so uh, he'll go ahead and uh, talk to us a little further on that matter about his son's death, Sylvester Oramani Jr., a uh, former student of Doan College. And part of the questions we were also asking here of uh, Lalu as well was, I mean, uh, just as my did highlight, the role that the students played. And that raises questions as to, I went to a boarding school, and I could relate with what transpired. Of course I was also bullied in school. <laughs> yeah, well, in school. You're not and the so, bullier. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the bully, as we say. But, but when you're a senior student, chances are that you, you just might fall prey to one or two punishments of uh, junior students. But when it goes overboard, you know, there has to be a line. So questions as to what does the school do to ensure that this kind of thing don't happen again? Do they put CCTV and where? Mm. Because mm. If, if it has to be your word against his to say, no, you participated and these are the images. So at what point do they do that to ensure they don't violate the privacy of students? Yeah, well, so, so, so that would have to be something that uh, the state government, you know, that regulates private uh, education in, in Lagos State would have to really look at if the facts you know, in the case clearly shows that there is a need for that kind of review. Uh, because when it comes to matters of security, then you can trump uh, some privacy uh, uh, rules. You know, it, it's just then a question of how do you disseminate, you know, how do you release the, info, the information when you need it? What are the uh, guidelines, you know, for you to be able to release it? So, so it's important to, to use this case to see what has, has, has to be done to secure you know, uh, the safety of uh, children, in, in, especially in, in, in boarding school. It's an important point. Okay, let's see if I have uh, Mr. Sylvester Romani back. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, please go ahead. We lost you while you were making your point about uh, the emotions crying. and the coroner crying. Yes. Yeah, no. Oh, it looks like... Say, yeah. uh, about the judgment? Yes. Yeah, the judgment was a witness. Yes. Then... While he was delivering the judgment, the judge, the uh, magistrate cried fifth time. He went to his senior about cleaning his face, came back again with tissue paper, and started crying. So the question I'm asking is that this is somebody that was at the initial stage that there's no sentiment, there's no emotion when people were crying, showing his, seeing his videos in the court. 
He was the one crying while delivering his own judgment. That one good time. That is one. Then two, the judgment, I am not a lawyer, but I go to court every day, does not represent the proceedings recorded, all the evidence taken from all the witnesses. What is Mason, boy, sir? Hello? What is Mason, sir? A lot is missing. A lot. I follow being a student in that school. Came to the court to testify that he saw them beating him. He went upstairs because he had an injury in his hand. He, he had a shout. He went to the room. The door was locked. The window blind was up. And he peeped and he saw five of them. Kasamu was holding bell. While the other ones was uh, using leg. The boy was shouting, defending his face. Those ones were not mentioned. It was not mentioned. Then another student, Tarela Wilson, came from Abuja to testify that my son confided in him that they told him if he tell anybody, they would kill him. That he's not going to tell him, but he would tell only him that they gave him a substance to drink. It was terrible and uh, uh, it was uh, dangerous and terrible. That the substance was very dangerous and terrible. Those were his words in court. Then let me ask. I sent this boy to Lagos State. I don't stay in Lagos. The principal of that school is the guidance of that board. The boy was sick in that school for three to four days. They said they had a doctor. They did not take care of him. There was no referral note given to us. So you just blame worry doctor? Well, you have already told us that the, the boy sustained injury while playing football. All the essays were concentrated on that leg. But at the end, the boy now opened up. I did not play football. I was beaten up. He confessed those three, Kasamu, Michael, Benjamin uh, Favor, and Aslam Tibli, and two others, five of them. Then, the Benjamin Favor, who asked him to describe his own elder sister's private part was not mentioned in court. There was no query. Somebody, a student, asked my son to describe his own elder sister's private part. The magistrate did not mention any of sorts. Instead, he started crying, taking one side, and he started crying. Then at the end, he said all judges, all doctors agreed that he's wanted or the other. Mm -hmm. I must tell you that that judgment is not his own judgment. That was why he was crying. He knows, and God knows. Mr. Aramoni, I, I really, I, it is a very, very sad and you know, very emotional matter. And, and this must really, really hurt. I must really, really hurt you as a father, you know, you know being called to take your son. I, I still recall the conversation we had with you and the journey which you described, going to Lagos, picking up your son, and then going to Asaba. Um, and I, I know that that's certainly not the end that you thought was going to happen. But when you, when you look back, and I, I, there's no easy way to ask this question, do you think that, you know, there are certain things that you could have done better as a father? I know that, you know, when students are bullied, and I know this from personal experience, that they rarely open up to their parents, you know, for fear of going back to that school and still being beaten up by the same people. Um, I, I'm just wondering, do you think that there are things that you could have done better? Maybe you could have suspected. I don't know if you ever sit and, and you wonder if there was anything you could have done differently as a parent, seeing right now that they are blaming parents uh, for the death of Sylvester. Yeah, I cannot tell you clearly, but if I can understand little of it, uh, I can do something better if I was given the true information, what happened to the boy. Because no, the day I went with the boy to worry, there was no flight. So I take through road to worry, and I pass through Bidin. I can as well branch the rest of Bidin teaching us all around. Then drop there with my son. But because we already given that information that he played football, that he sustained an injury. That was the impression given to us. The school had a doctor, according to them. The doctor came, and that she attended to this boy. Does, did she give us any referral note? She said they massaged, she asked the doctor to massage 
the boy. I said to massage the boy, but the man said he did not mention any of such massages. Instead, he said the family was at What else will I do? When I get to worry, I call the doctor. I was going to the clinic. He said there was no, no vacant bed. And the place is turned through. He will come and attend to the boy. He came almost immediately and took some. And he, he dropped lunch there and started attending to the boy. It was on the 29th. He finished attending to the boy on the 28th. He started on the 26th. Then 29th was when we went for the X-ray and all the rest. Because the body was still pain. It was still child. It was in the evening of 29th that we got the result that he had an enlarged liver. So he said, okay, we'll take him to uh, Ogarati the hospital the next morning. The next morning he died. All right. Well, Ms. Romani, we, we do thank you for talking to us this morning. We know it's a tough time uh, for yourself and family. So it's... Um, it is indeed. Uh, yeah. Just quickly, I just want to ask, do you, what do you plan to do next? Mm -hmm. When you're not satisfied, you certainly are not satisfied with this yeah. ruling. Do you intend to take it up? Do you intend to go to a higher court? What precisely do you want of to do? Course. Of course, of course, we are waiting to get the judgment from the coroner inquest. He, he, he said, I, now, let me say one thing. Inside the court, I stood up and I told him I want to appreciate him. He allowed me. And I told him, thank you for uh, using seven hours to judge this case. You really tried. Also, thank you for crying because of my son. But I must tell you that the judgment you gave does not represent the true evidence given in this court. He now said that is his own opinion. Any other judge, anybody can have his own opinion. We are going to get the opinion of another person. Yeah. All right, Mr. Romani, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, well, part of what he said is that uh, he says the judgment that the man was crying because you know that that is not his judgment. Yeah. But, I mean, there are just so many questions and so many perspectives to this matter. And um, people can make up their minds from yeah. what they've seen because he never missed any court session for two years, yeah. according to him. So he said he knows that that judgment, according to him, was not that gentleman's judgment. But it's uh, unfortunate, but he says he will take it upstairs yeah. I think uh, that, and see uh, what happens. Yeah, I, I, I think he should uh, because clearly the, the, the least that... We all hold Mr. Romini is a decent closure. But clearly, that has not happened. Mm. What do you also say to parents who have children in boarding houses and you know, maybe they come home on, with one sort of pain or the other? Do you, would you say that they should also err on the side of caution and, and you know, suspect something foul? Because, I mean, as I did highlight, a lot of children, when they're bullied in school, the, the fear of going back to school to face yeah. those same bullies yeah. is a big problem, which usually keeps them silent. Yeah, the, the, uh, how, how do you think that parents can break that code of silence? I, I think what has to happen, two things. The, uh, the, the, the code of silence, parents should try to be closer to their, to their children, basically, as much as possible. You know, but I think the greater point is that we must, as I mean, it, the, the government must have a more uh, stringent regulation of boarding education in this country. Yeah, it must be much more because he, he is right. The principal of the school is the it's guardian that, yeah. of that boy in mm -hmm. that place. Whatever happens in that school is the responsibility. I'm I'm, I'm surprised that they that the, the corona has just given them, uh, well, we don't know what the facts I mean, are. It's not just surprising, so. it's also disappointing because in boarding schools, you have housemasters, mm. you have several layers of yeah. care. Yeah. So what happened to all what of happened? those yeah. in this kind of school? It, it, so it, that's it, why just... many people look at this and feel, there are several unanswered questions. Several unanswered many questions. people went to boarding schools yeah. and they know what plays out. So, but yeah. This case is not over, you know, and, and we hold it as a people to the Oromini family to, to, to give them a decent closure. That has not happened. Mm. All right, so unfortunately, uh, we couldn't talk about the Ganduji matter to see what's yeah. going on there politically, but it, it is incredibly important for us to get it right at every level. So even if the fear people can you know, kill the flesh, what about who can deal with your soul at mm. the end of the day? Mm. So don't give too much respect to such people, but they will be there when you have to answer for your soul and what you do with what you've been given.
Well, that is the show today. We do thank you all for watching. Lalu, thank you for coming as always. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. I'm Chamberlain. So, goodbye. Thank you so much. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf.